This is going on page 44 when we are done. So what we're talking about today is the rational zero theorem, which can also be called the rational root theorem. Those of us that learned math back in the day, we know it as the rational root theorem, but root and zero are the same thing, right? And I think the official name is rational zero theorem, which makes me think they changed it along the way somewhere, but it doesn't even matter. They mean the same thing. So let's talk about rational zeros. It says recall, means we should already know this, recall that a polynomial function of degree n can have at most how many real zeros? No, if the degree is n, then it's n, n real zeros, and the key there is real. So if I have an eighth degree polynomial, I could have eight real zeros, bless you. And it says at most, because it doesn't mean that I have eight of them, it just means at most that's what I would have. Um, and it could have real, because I could have some imaginary zeros, all right? So your real zeros can be rational or irrational. So let's talk about the difference between those two, because that's actually a difference you've known for a very long time. I think that you just don't realize that you know some of these things. If you see, if you're reading a word problem or whatever, and you see the word ratio in a math problem, what should ratio make you think of? Fraction. fraction. Ratio is a fraction. If it's a ratio of this, you can put this over this and make a fraction out of it, right? Rational is just a different form of the word ratio. See? Word ratio. Ratio. Right there. So that means rational numbers can be written in a form of a fraction. Irrational numbers cannot. So rational zeros, or rational numbers in general, are those that can be written in the form of a fraction like p over q. So one-third is a rational number because I have 1 over 3. 0.25 is a rational number because it says that can be written, not that they are, but they can be written in the form of a fraction. 5 is a rational number because I can put 5 over 1, right? Pi, not a rational number because you cannot make a fraction that equals pi. 22 over 7 is not it. That's a very bad approximation of it. Um, Square root of 2, you cannot write that as a fraction. That's why when you would do it on those other calculations, you like square root of 2 and then you do math enter enter and it gives you nothing back because it's not a rational number and it's not going to put it in the form of a fraction. Okay? So we're looking at all rational numbers, meaning that if there's a square root involved anywhere, it's going to be a perfect square. You're not going to get the square root of 7 or something like that. Square root of 25 would be okay because that's 5, which is 5 over 1. Right? So that's your rational, irrational ideas there. So what the rational zero theorem says can be used to determine all possible rational zeros of a polynomial function. So all of the possibles. And that means that right now, all we know is that there's an infinite number of possibility. We are going to narrow that down greatly. So if we have this polynomial, which, you know, this is just your generic polynomial that has to look crazy in order to involve everything, they have integer coefficients. The coefficients have to be integers. You can't have one-third as one of your coefficients then every rational zero of the function has the following form. P over Q, where the P is going to be the factors of constant term. And that's this right here. So that's A sub zero. So it's the factors of that over the factors of the leading coefficient, which is a sub n, which is this number, oops, which is this number right here, okay? So for, at the beginning now, we're just going to list all the possible rational zeros. So like, if you give me this, like a number one, if I say find all the zeros, and y'all find them, and you try and tell me that, oh, I got x equals 5, and I got x equals 7, and I'm going to know right away without even looking at my answer key that you're wrong, okay? That's not even a possibility. So here's how we use this, okay? And we're just going to write it out, write the words out just this one time. But here's my constant term. Here's the term that has the leading coefficient. The constant term always goes on the top. So here I want the factors of negative 18 over the factors, what's the leading coefficient? What's the leading coefficient? 1. The leading coefficient is 1. The exponent there means nothing. Okay. So then to figure this out, in the numerator I need all the factors of 18. So we'll start with 1. And it could be a positive or a negative 1. Yes? Then does 2 work? Yep. 
So because I could have negative 1 times a positive 18 or a positive 1 times a negative 18. Does that make sense? So both of them will work. So negative 18. Yeah. So then I get plus or minus 2. Does 3 divide into 18? Yes. Plus or minus 3. What about 4? No. 5? No. 6? Yes. Okay, so now when you get here, because it's 3 times 6, now you know that you just have 2 more to go, right? So it will be 2 times plus or minus 9 and plus or minus 18. So let's go back to this plus or minus thing. Even if that was a positive 18, I would have the exact same thing up there because I could have negative 1 times negative 18. Does that make sense to you? So it's plus or minus no matter what because it just depends on what you put with it. Then your factors of 1 are plus or minus 1. Okay, so now you have to figure out your possibilities. And because the leading coefficient is 1, that makes this super easy. All of this gets divided by 1, so guess what? Your possibles, your possible zeros are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 18. So we went from thinking we had an infinite number of possibilities to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 of them. That's why 5 is not even an option. 7 is not even an option. Okay. So if you look at this, you don't have, we're not, if we factor this, maybe we can factor it, maybe we couldn't. But if you can't factor it, then you at least know what your possibilities are to start trying to test them. Okay. We good? All right. Let's look at number 2. So I won't write this first part out again, but we're using the constant term and the leading coefficient. So the factors of the constant term are just going to be plus or minus 1. Then of the leading coefficient, which is 4, I get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Everybody okay with all that? That means then that our possibilities, so our possible zeros, be 1 over 1, which is plus or minus 1. 1 over 2, which is plus or minus 1 half. And 1 over 4, which is plus or minus 1 fourth. And that is my answer. Those are your only options. Everybody good so far? So, all right, so let's look at one where the numerator or denominator, like neither one of them, is 1. So I'm using negative 12 and 6. So in the numerator, I've got the factors of negative 12. So plus or minus 1, then 2 works, 3 works, 4 works. Does 5 work? No, but 6 does. And then that's 2 times 6, so really I just have one more, plus or minus 12. Then in the denominator, I need the factors of 6. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 6. Everybody okay with all, where all the numbers came from? Now, I highly suggest you go through this in a methodical type of way, meaning this, instead of just like jumping around or thinking that you've got them all done. So my possibles, I'm going to do 1 over 1, which is plus or minus 1. 1 over 2, which is plus or minus 1 half. 1 over 3, plus or minus 1 third. 1 over 6, plus or minus 1 sixth. Then I move on to 2. Wait, wait, what's the question? I did 1 over everything in the denominator. No, it's 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 6. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to have to do 2 over 1, yes. So then 2 over 1 gives me 2, plus or minus 2. What's 2 over 2? 1, so I already have it. I don't write it again. 2 over 3, I don't have that, so I do need that, plus or minus 2 thirds. Then 2 over 6, what is that? 1 third. Do you already have it? Yes, so we don't write it again. So then we move on to 3. 3 over 1 is plus or minus 3. 3 over 2, do we have that? No. Plus or minus 3 halves. 3 over 3. Yes, we already have that. 3 over 6, what's that? 1 half. We already have that. So we move on to 4. 4 over 1, plus or minus 4. 4 over 2, what's that? 
two, we got that. Four over three, do we have that? No, plus or minus four thirds. Four over six, do we have that? Yes, that is two thirds. So then we move on to six. Six over one, plus or minus six. Six over two is three, we got that. Six over three is two, we got that. Six over six is one. So we move on to 12. 12 over 1 is 12. We don't have that. 12 over 2 is 6. We got that. 12 over 3. We got that. 12 over 6. We got that. This is it. So it's not as many as you would think it is because some of them are already exist there. Okay. Any questions at this point? All right. So now here's how we're going to use this to find the rational zeros. We, the step one is to list all possible rational zeros like we just did using the rational zero theorem. Then we test the zeros using synthetic substitution. So we're going to use the rational zero theorem. We test them using synthetic substitution. And the, you know, the remainder theorem is going to have, or the factor theorem is going to help, help us there. Then when you find a zero that works, we use the remainder to completely factor the polynomial. Then we find the zeros. All right, so let's flip this over and let's try that. So on this first one, we are going to, now this is something that we don't have the skills to factor. Like if I could factor it, factor it, that's fine. But I can't factor this, so I need to list all my possible zeros. Since I've got 18 and this is 1, I don't have to make my fraction since the denominator is 1. It's really just the factors of 18. So my possibles here then are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, but 6 does. Then that would give me 9 oops, and 18. Okay, so those are my possibilities. Since I can't factor it, basically now I've got, there's, 12 possibilities for me to check. So I may have to go through, I won't have to go through synthetic substitution 12 times because once I find one of them, if I can reduce it, maybe I can factor it then. Maybe not, and I have to keep going, but we'll have to see. So we'll start easy. We'll start with one. Doesn't matter what you start with, but I would suggest, you know, starting with the easiest one. Your coefficients are 1, 3, negative 7, negative 27, and negative 18. I'm sorry. All right, so now I bring down my 1, 1, 4, 4, negative 3, negative 3, negative 30, negative 30, negative 48. So what does that tell me about 1? It's not one of my zeros, right? So now I can try negative 1. So I'll put negative 1 out here. Use the same coefficients, 1, 3, negative 7, negative 27, oops, I don't need a comma there, and negative 18. So I bring down my 1, so this is negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 9, 9, negative 18, 18, 0. Okay, so let's think about what this is really saying to us. What this means is one of my zeros would be x equals negative 1, which means the factor is x plus 1. Don't mess up on that part because you see the negative 1. Because I know you know this. Make sure you're thinking about it correctly. So then when I come over here, f of x is going to equal x plus 1 times, now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's going to be a cubic. We're going to have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. All right, so I, maybe I can factor this. If I can't factor it, then I use this to be able to test another one. Do you think you could factor? Does this one look like it probably factors with grouping? Yes. All right, so then go ahead and factor it. We don't have to do that again. Go ahead and keep, finish the factoring there.
So, I mean, once you've got it to where you can factor it, then it's just like everything else. You just factor and find the zeros. We were. We just weren't doing it as a testing, uh, testing these to figure out. Like, we've done this process. And I've said, you know, if, if it is a zero, then go ahead and do the rest of this. So like this, this from here, here, none of that's new. What's new is you are coming up with the ones you get that you're actually testing. You have to know which ones to choose from. You can't just randomly pick numbers. Does that make sense? Yes. I gave you the numbers. So you're having to come up with them here. So yeah, the process, I mean, you should have that down by now for sure. Okay, we get that. Trust the process. We good? All right, so let's look at the next one. Go ahead and come up with your possibilities here. If you can do that much, you've got to use the negative 10 and the 3, right? All right, so do you agree with me on the possibilities there? I guess. So I would suggest, again, we start with one. We'll start with one. My coefficients are 3, negative 8, negative 33, negative 10. Okay. Should be able to run through this. 3, 3, negative 5. Oops. Sticking my head there. So then what do you know about 1? Not a factor. So we go on to negative 1. I know, it's weird, isn't it? So then we're going to get, we still use the, oops, we still use 3, negative 8, negative 33, negative 10. Bring this down, we get 3, negative 3, negative 11, 11, 22, 22, 12. All right, so plus and minus 1, neither one of them work. Now, we could go on to plus or minus 1 third, but I'd rather not have to deal with the fractions. How about you? No, yeah, so it's okay to go ahead and go, you know what? I'm going to move on to 2. So we'll do 2. And with 2 out here, I'm going to still use 3, negative 8, negative 33, negative 10. Now you may not always be able to avoid all of the fractions, but I'm going to run through all the whole numbers first. It'd be way easier. <laughs> uh, so we get 3 and then 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 37. What is that going to be? Negative 74 and then negative 84. So does this one work? No, it does not. So now we use negative 2. And then we get 3, negative 8, negative 33, negative 10. And then this is going to give me 3, negative 6, negative 14, 28, negative 5, 10, 0. Yay. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have to do any more synthetic substitution because if we can't factor this, we're going to have to. But remember, this tells me that x equals negative 2, so I get x plus 2, which is the factor. So when I come over here and I say, all right, well, then that means that f of x is equal to x plus 2, and then I use this to get the second part of that, 3x squared minus 14x minus 5. So does that look like you could probably factor that part? I think so, so go ahead and try it.
All right, so what do you think? Do you agree with me? Yes? Any questions at this point? Anything, anything? All right, and let's jump to number six. Now, once again, I've got that this is my constant term. My leading coefficient is one, so that's good. I do not have to use the fraction here. So my possibilities are, and notice here, that's the other thing, is I wanted you to notice that these three that you got, those are in this list. There's that one third, there's that five, right? And so had we used one third, that would have worked too, but there you go. All right, but we, no, we skipped one half. We didn't skip one third. Um, bless you. All right, so my possibilities, oh, did we skip one third? Did I just lie to you? Oh, we did skip one third, I'm sorry, thank you. I apologize. All right, so my possibilities are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, no three, plus or minus four, and four times four is 16. So by then, now I'm just matching them up with the rest. So plus or minus eight, plus or minus 16. All right, so once again, we're gonna start with one. And we could start with any of them, but it's really easier to still start with one. So I'm gonna get one, negative one, negative 12, 28 and negative 16. So this is 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 12, negative 12, 16, 16, and 0. Hey, look at that. What does that tell you? Uh -huh, it's a factor, which means I know y'all are all thinking this. There's no way it's going to work on 1. Um, so what is the factor? x minus 1. Okay, so that means over here I get f of x is equal to x minus 1 times, then what I have left right here, there's four terms, so it's going to be a cubic, x cubed minus, there's no x squared term, so that's minus 12x plus 16. Okay, so now we look at this, and do you think you can factor that second part? Well, if it was a squared, like maybe, but it's cubed, really the only the one, only way you know how to factor cubics is either with grouping, so you'd have to already have four terms, which we don't, or if it's the sum or difference of cubes, which it's not, which means we can't factor that. So now that means we have to use this, the reduced part of this, and keep going and try some more. So now we tried one, got to do negative one. And we're going to use the reduced part, one, because we want, we want it to factor. Like, it's not going to help me to use the original part. So I get 1, 0, negative 12, and 16. So I bring down the 1, get negative 1, negative 1, 1. It doesn't do it. Okay. So now we move on to 2. <laughs> I'm glad. Glad somebody does. All right, then I get 1, 0, negative 12, and 16. And then 1, 2, 4. All right, so what does that mean about 2? Two? 2 is a 0, so your factor is what? X minus 2. So f of x is equal to, we still have this x minus 1, right? But we have now factored this part into x minus 2 times this right here, which is x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now, do you think you can factor this part? Yes, because if not, or even if you didn't want to factor, you could still go through and keep testing if you wanted to, but I suggest you factor. And so go ahead and factor that. Let's get it fully factored. So do you agree with my four factors? I'm sorry. I have four factors here that I've written out. Is this how I should write my final answer? No, no because look, you got two of these, right? So this is really f of x equals x minus 2 squared times x minus 1 times x plus 4. And the order in which you write your factors does not matter. It may not always be the exact order that I write them out, but you can multiply in any order, so it's fine. Then, so this is my fully factored and condensed form, 
And then x is equal to, let me get a negative 4, 1. Does this give me plus or minus 2? No, no it just gives me 2. Okay. Everybody okay with that? What questions do you have? All right, when I give you your assignment, you are doing the odds only. So write that at the top so you don't do something weird. Odds only.